What's up guys, Sean Geyser here, Geyser Performance, your friendly Geyser Performance janitor slash engineer. Today, we're gonna show you how to install your Can-Am X3 Geyser Performance OEM doors the way you need to so you don't have a bad day. With our OEM factory replacement X3 doors, we use and utilize the factory door frames to make it a little bit easier for everyone at home to install as well help with people on a tight budget. All right guys, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is remove your factory OEM door skins. Grab a drill and drill out the single rivet on the driver front door. Then you're gonna wanna grab your Torx bit and a wrench, pull off the cover for the door handle. After removing the cover, you're gonna wanna remove the remaining hardware holding the front door skin on. Remember to save the factory OEM hardware. After removing the hardware, you're gonna remove the lower plastic from the door. After removing the lower plastic section, you're gonna remove the upper plastic section. Your front driver's side door is now ready for install. Now let's tackle the rear. First thing you're gonna wanna do is remove the three rivets holding the cover on for the door handle. After removing the rivets, the door handle cover just slides right off. Now that your cover's off, you're gonna remove the two remaining rivets holding the door skin on. Next is to remove the factory hardware holding the OEM door skin on. Remember during this process to save all your factory OEM door hardware. Now that you have removed all your rivets and factory door skin hardware, you can start by taking off the lower section of the door, then the upper section slips forward and out. Now that your driver's side door skins are removed, you're gonna repeat the process for the passenger side. So now that you guys got your factory doors skins off, we're gonna lay out all of the parts and all of the bolts required for your install. We found it's easier to do this or you're gonna have a bad day. Before we get started, why don't we slip into something a little bit more comfortable? That's a little more refreshing. Now that we got that out of the way, let's move into what we got here. The first thing that you guys need to know is obviously setting which door goes in what position. It's pretty self-explanatory, but if you can't, they're very distinctive. Front's a front and a rear's a rear. The first mistake that everybody makes is they think, hey, I'm done with my stock doors. I don't need them anymore. Or the parts that go with them. That's wrong. For two reasons. One, you might have a friend or a family member that could need some old takeoff doors or you can sell them, get a little extra more cash, buy some other parts and accessories. The other big important thing that a lot of people make the mistake on is they throw the factory hardware away. You need some of that. And, and I'll get to that during our install. 
Here you got the backing plates for the front doors, the hardware that goes with it. All of our bolts and washers. We give these alignment washers, which I will show you what these are for later. Our door brackets, front door brackets, all the tools you need. And this is where it gets important. A lot of people, even me, big fan of power tools. During this install, not what you want. We don't like using power tools in this specific install, mainly because the stainless steel hardware galls up when it goes in too fast. It's not fun trying to fix, and I can assure you, you're gonna have a bad day. That's why we like to use any form of oil, any form of lubrication to put a little bit on the stainless. You wanna put it on the stainless bolt itself. We put it on there to help during the install so the stainless hardware doesn't gall up. We also like to keep a rag handy for numerous reasons. First is you might use it when you're done cleaning up, shine your doors, be proud of what you just did. The other time is some people need to use them to wipe their tears when they slip with a wrench and scratch the powder coat off their door. Universal. Now that you guys are familiar with all the components on this kit, let's get to the install on the car. We recommend during your install, you get a little bit of additional help. Some of you, not all of you, are probably in good terms with your wife, like I am. Love you, babe. Now, if you're trying to keep it from the wife and you don't want her to know what you're doing, have a colleague, a friend come over and help you during this process. Well, you're not as pretty, but I think you'll do. First step, we're gonna grab a front door. We're gonna grab a little bit of hardware. This is where you're gonna understand why you got some extra bolts, cause you're gonna use some and you're not. So grab yourself at least one shim, long bolt washers for each side, nut, short bolt washers for each side, nut, and your front door. The shims, these funny thick things that come inside your kit, there's a reason for them. We all know if you've owned a Can-Am before, they're all a little bit different from the factory. We give you th these shims to help with alignment. This will solve a lot of your rattle problems. And that's also why you have two length bolts. If you end up using a shim, you're gonna need the long bolt. If you don't, you're gonna need the short bolt. We found that 80% of the time, this back top corner uses at least one shim. The shim goes in between the door frame and your replacement door. When we get to the back, you're gonna do it a little bit different. You want one of your stainless washers on the outside. You're gonna put your one shim in, washer, and just mock your nut up. Again, we throw a lot in the bin because we don't know how your car is gonna fit up, but this is what these are in. You might not use any of them, you might use all of them. It is strictly for alignment purposes. Now that you got the rear mocked up and the back mocked up, do not tighten any hardware at all. You'll see on the inside, these factory doors they're slotted front to back. What we did is we slotted the outside of your doors a little bit different vertically, and this will help with alignment once the door gets shut. Don't tighten into your hardware yet. This is your first stage. Now that we got the front door mocked up, let's grab some stuff for the rear. Grab ourselves a couple shims again. Let's grab ourselves long bolt, two washers, and a nut, short bolt, two washers and a nut. And then we're gonna need our rear door. Now that we got our door back here, back to the shims. Again, you don't need to use one of these on every single hole. Some will need them, some will not. 80%, 90%, who's really keeping count of the cars? Like I told you, this one required one. We found out that most of these cars, they need two in the front of your rear door. And I'll show you why here in a minute. Nothing in the back. There have been cases 
where people haven't paid attention to this back hole. And this little guy right here, when you tighten this up, it smashes the door and you have a bad day. We're gonna put our two shims in. One washer on the outside, long bolt, cause we're using shims. You're gonna go into this factory slotted front hole here. For now, we're not gonna put a shim in the back just to see how we're looking here in a minute. So we're just gonna go straight single bolt. Now on this car, I'm touching right here already on that hinge and I can still get a finger in here. This particular car, it's gonna need at least one shim. Now that I got one shim, you're gonna need a long bolt. We're gonna mock this up. Much better. Do not tighten any of this hardware till the end. Now that we got these doors mocked up, let's check a little bit of fitment right here. If you plane this front door, you want this back door to lay just about a quarter inch inside the front one. Again, none of this is tight. We're just checking a couple references. The reason why we want this planed inside of the front door is if you're running through trees or bushes, whatever with your, if you're driving down the side of a river, through the forest, if your door is mounted out here, stuff's gonna hit the front of this door, tear it open, tear it off, bend it. Again, you're gonna have a bad day. We wanna make sure that we're a little bit inside of the front door. Not an enormous amount. If it's too big, we're gonna add another shim. Push it out a little bit farther. Again, quarter inch inside the front door. This car, with the shim setup that we have, that 80% of the cars, it's actually looking pretty good. We're a little low here in the front. That is why we slot the doors, for this reason right here. We want you to fit in here, nice, even lines. That's why it's adjustable. This car's looking pretty good. Whoever's the engineer of the two working on the car, you or your buddy, they can take a seat grab a beer, hang out until we get to the other side. Now that we know that we're really close, we can start snugging stuff up a little bit. Again, we're not ready for full tight. We're just gonna snug it up. Don't forget a little WD-40 transmission fluid. We're using Maxima assembly lube. A Little bit on that bolt before you put your nut on. Keeps you from having a bad day. Now we're gonna snug it up. Again, just a little bit. This isn't high school prom. Now that we got these snug, we're gonna do one more check here. Better, good, our adjustment, right? We left it still snug, but a little bit loose because we're gonna have to move this one down a tiny bit to get it to fit. Plane's good in the back. Now we're gonna move to the lower mounts. Now, here is why you don't throw your stock hardware away. We're actually gonna use two of these bolts right now on the front door. Grab your two bolts, your two stock nuts. You're gonna grab one of these long ones and one of these short ones. You got two longer brackets in your kit. These long ones, these grab the front of the door down here. They gotta be longer to grab the bottom of the door to try and get rid of the shake. We have people sometimes call and ask and saying, my doors are rattling. Again, that's why we shim them. You want a little bit of pressure on this corner when the door shuts. That keeps tension on everything, gets rid of the rattle and the vibration. You're going to use your stock hardware through this top hole. 
These are slotted too, and you're gonna see why in a second. This only fits in one way. Make sure your flat side is up against your door. One of your short brackets in the back on this one. Again, this is why we don't tighten the top all the way. It's just snug. You gotta work this around a little, getting this in here. This bracket here, this bracket's slotted too. You don't need shims on every part of the door. This particular car, we didn't need to put any on the lower. That's why we went back to the short bolts. We don't have it tight. Everything is slotted on all these mounts to try and make this as modular and movable as possible for you guys to tailor them the best that you can on your cars. The next big mistake that we get from people and why we say don't tighten anything until you get farther along. If you tighten this bolt down in its slot before you tighten this bolt, it's gonna tear this bracket up and bend this bracket up. So what you gotta do first, you're gonna snug this bolt up and you're gonna snug this bolt up. That's gonna put the bracket where it needs to be. You already mocked these ones up so it's gonna be aligned where it wants to, side to side. And we got this lined up. So what we need to do now that we've got this lined up, side to side alignment, we're gonna snug this bolt up. You just have to make sure that the face of all your brackets, they go up flush up against the tube on this door frame. If it goes crooked or sideways and you bolt it up, it's not gonna be happy and you're gonna continue to have a bad day. We're gonna snug these up. Now that our brackets are snugged up, again, not tight, snug, because once we shut this and we're checking our alignment, we still want this all to move around a little bit. Now we're checking our alignment. My door's not latched all the way, but you'll see there's a little bit of pressure on it. When it latches, that gets rid of your rattle. What you're looking for is to line up your lines here the best that you possibly can. This one's really close. We're gonna move this down a little bit. Snug this top bolt. This one's tight now. We know it's not going anywhere. Our front alignment now is finished. And we can just lock this door down all the way. Front door is aligned, completely tight. All right guys, now that you got your front door tight, let's go ahead and throw your backing plate on. All your backing plates, they come raw. You can do whatever color you want. You can leave them raw. People like to do special colors on those, their cars. Just get them powder coated before you throw them on. Stainless hardware. A little bit of assembly lube. WD-40. Old engine oil. I'm sure you're, you guys have something in your garage that you can use to help with that process. Very simple. Backing plate on the back side of your door Hardware through the front, nut on the back. We're gonna get all these started. Careful not to scratch the front of your door. All right, backing plates on, bolts are tight. We're done here. Now we're gonna move to the back. Now this is kind of where it gets tricky. We're shut. Your biggest critical point is making sure that this back corner and the front corner of your rear door, that these line up. So we're gonna roll this one up, snug these top bolts. Now that we're to the back door, We've got our small L brackets mocked up, factory door hardware. Again, we want this snug before we do anything with these. 
okay? Snug these up so this is flat up against your door frame. Then we're gonna shut it, check our alignment one last time, and then come and final tighten all of these. Now one other thing to notice is what part of the factory door gets used. This slot, there's only one. On the back side, there's two slots. Save you a little bit of time. The bracket goes in the front slot on the rear door. Now we have our step from the front door to the rear door so we don't snag on anything in the front. This is all looking good. We're pretty happy here with our fitment. We're good to final tighten the rear door. All right guys, driver's side's done. Top's tight, bottom's tight. We're aligned. We got a little bit of tension to get rid of our rattle. Now that we got the driver's side done, we're gonna go ahead, move to the passenger side, repeat all those steps. Our alignment's right, our fitment's right, everything's happy. We're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Remember the biggest things you need to focus on is not being in a hurry. Always good to have a little extra hand. Make sure you put WD-40, anything you got, on your hardware so you don't have hardware issues while you're tightening everything. Remember, the more time you guys spend lining up the doors, the easier this installation is gonna be. Now, if you're watching this video and you haven't purchased doors yet, or you're watching this video because you purchased the doors, remember you can get the doors and any other parts at geyserperformance.com. During this install, not what you want. Is that okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you'd have freaky kind, you know what else you can use. Mr. Geyser. If I would have grabbed the right, told him to grab the right wrench. Blooper, bleep. Who hired this guy? God. <laughs> Suspension, the video is going to be like, today we're going to show you how to do your suspension. And then it's going to be like, go to your local install shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, what did you just say, Sean? How much do you install these things? Me? Yeah. Oh, hundreds of these kits. Oh, that's so, a I'm the only one good enough to do it. <laughs>